Welcome to Electrical Circuit Analysis. Throughout this lecture, I'd like to request you to pause the video whenever you need it and keep pen and paper with you so that we can solve problems to consolidate our understanding. Linearity is the property of an element describing a linear relationship between a cause and its effect. Although the property applies to many circuit elements, the commonest example is a resistor. So the voltage and the current relationship of the resistor is linear, as we know from Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, where V and I are the voltage and the current of the resistor, and R is the resistance of the resistor. So the voltage and current of the resistor are linearly related. Linearity is a combination of two properties. Number one is homogeneity, also known as scaling, and number two is the additivity property. So both properties have to be fulfilled to, I mean, for two variables to be linearly related. So if two variables, let's say A and B, are linearly related, they must fulfill the homogeneity property and they must also obey the additivity property. So what are these these two properties? So the homogeneity property requires that if the input is multiplied by a constant, then the output is multiplied by the same constant. So for a resistor for example, Ohm's law relates the input to the output V. Let's say the current I here is the input and the voltage is the output and R is the resistance of a resistor. So Ohm's law states that V is equal to I R. And if we increase the current by cost constant K, the voltage increases correspondingly by K. So if we increase the current 10 times, the voltage becomes 10 times. If we increase the current 100 times, the voltage becomes 100 times. So this is this is called homogeneity or scaling property. So if for some instance, uh, if we, for instance, uh, double the current, the power increases, let's say, the voltage, let's say, increases four times or something, then it's not a linear resistor, and that resistor does not obey Ohm's law. So homogeneity property basically states that if the input is multiplied by a constant k, the output also becomes k times greater. Okay, let's now talk about additivity property, which requires that the response to the sum of inputs is the sum of the responses to each of the input applied separately. So let's say we have our earlier resistor of resistance R, but now we apply two currents. So when we are applying I1, the voltage we are recording is V1 and when we are applying I2 in the same resistor the voltage across the resistor becomes V2. Now if we apply I1 plus I2 we see that the voltage becomes I1 plus I2 times R if we sort of multiply we end up with V1 plus V2. So basically, additivity property states that if we divide the overall current into two components, I1 and I2, and we determine the output for I1, and then we get the output for I2, and we then sum the output, V1 plus V2, then we obtain the output, the overall output. That is, when we input I1 plus I2, what is the voltage we're going to get? That's V. So, so the bottom line is the response to sum of inputs, I1 and I2 here, is the sum of the responses to each input applied separately. So when we separately apply I1 and we separately apply I2 and sum the responses, we get the overall response. So that's what the derivative property is telling us. 
So we say that a resistor is a linear element because the voltage current relationships satisfies both the homogeneity and the additivity property. So in general, a circuit is linear if it is both additive and homogeneous. So both additivity and homogeneity or scaling property have to be fulfilled to call two variables linear. So two variables are linearly li related if they obey both the additivity property and the homogeneity property. And the linear circuit consists of only linear elements, linear dependent sources, and independent sources. So wha what are examples of variables that are not linearly related? Power and voltage, or power and current, are two examples of uh, nonlinear relationships. So please pause this video and try to see if power and voltage and power and current obeys the additivity or homogeneity property, considering that P is equal to V squared by R equals to I squared R. So please pause this video. So hopefully you've been able to figure this out for yourself. So let's say we have a resistor R and when current I1 flows through the resistor R, the power P1 is equal to I1 square R. But when, when we change the current to I2, the power P2 is I2 square R2, I2 square R. And if current I1 plus I2 flows through resistor R, then the power absorbed is I1 plus I2 whole square times R, which is not equal to P1 plus P2. Therefore, this does not obey the additivity property. And we can also see if one of them is violated, additivity or homogeneity, we'll call them nonlinear. So we don't we see that here power and current violates the additivity property. So we don't even need to look homogeneity, we can directly call them nonlinear. But let's just look at homogeneity property anyway. So P is equal to I square R. So if you double the current, I1 here becomes 2 I1. The power becomes 4 P1. So doubling the current makes the power 4 times the original value, which means it also violates homogeneity property. So if two variables are linear, they must obey both additivity and homogeneity. If they violate at least one of them, we call the two variables nonlinear. So you might be wondering, what has this got to do with circuit analysis? And how can we apply this thing for circuit analysis? So in this course, we're talking about circuits that are linear. So in other words, each of the element of a circuit has a linear voltage current relationship. So let's say we're trying to determine a current I and we have a variable voltage source Vs in the circuit. So how are we going to solve that with our conventional analysis techniques such as nodal analysis, mesh analysis, force transformation, Thevenin's theorem? I mean, Thevenin's theorem can be used to solve this, but one way to do it is to assume uh, a value of the variable voltage source. Let's say Vs is equal to 10 volts. And then we do conventional analysis, nodal analysis, mesh analysis, KVL, KCL, whatever is suitable for you. And then determine the desired current for that value of the voltage source. Now, according to superposition principle, if the value of the voltage source changes, let's say Vs becomes one-tenth of its original value, that is, it goes from 10 volt to 1 volt, we can automatically say that the current also becomes one-tenth of its initial value. So you don't have to analyze the circuit all over again if one of the elements changes in the circuit. That's the magic of linearity property. So if you can establish a relationship 
of an unknown quantity, unknown voltage or current, with a known voltage or current, you can then determine the unknown voltage or current even if the known voltage or current changes. So that's the essence of linearity principle for electrical circuit analysis. So we're going to look at the look at linearity property with an example. So here we have to determine I naught, this current here. But the voltage source Vs here has two possible values, 12 volt and 24 volt. I mean, obviously you can set 12 volt and do nodal analysis, mesh analysis, and determine I naught. And then you can set Vs equals to 24 volt, and then do the whole analysis all over again. But you have to solve like two circuits to perform that to perform uh, that kind of analysis. And here Vs only has two values. It could have 10 values. It could have 100 values. You can't possibly calculate, you can't possibly analyze, I mean, each one of these circuits. This will be extremely painful and time consuming. So linearity gives us a way out. To so what we're going to do here, we're going to let Vs equals to 12 volt. And then we'll analyze the circuit normally. And then we'll determine the current I naught. I naught here is equal to I two, is equal to twelve by seven to six ampere. So when V S is equal to twelve, I naught is twelve by seven to six ampere. And then we're not going to analyze the circuit all over again. We'll see that V S when V S is twenty four volt, it becomes twice as much as this one. That's why we multiply the current I naught with by two as well to determine what what it is when Vs is equal to 24 volt. So when the source value is doubled, I naught is also doubled. And you didn't have to analyze the whole circuit again to determine I naught. So this might sound pretty weird because usually when we're doing DC circuit analysis, all the Voltage sources, resistors, current sources have constant value. It usually doesn't have variable value. But if, if it does, linearity property gives us a way out and saves us a lot of pain of analyzing the circuit again and again for each value of the variable element. So here is another application of the linearity property. Here, for instance, uh, we need to determine I naught, the current I naught that is going through this 5 ohm resistor. So you can do nodal analysis, mesh analysis, there will be three meshes here, 1, 2, 3. You already know I1 is 15. You only need to find I2 and I3. You can do it using mesh analysis. You can also use uh, nodal analysis or even Kugel and circuit formula to reduce it and determine the voltages. Sure, you can do that. But another way of doing it is to assume that I naught is equal to one ampere. So we'll first assume I naught is equal to one ampere, and then we'll find a known current in the circuit. So let's find a known current. What is known? What is known? What is known? This one is the, the only known current in the circuit. I s is equal to 15 ampere. No other current in the circuit is known. So what we're going to do is that we're going to let I naught is equal to I naught equal to one ampere, and then we'll try to find the value of I s for that I naught. So if I naught is equal to a one, then I s uh, is five ampere. That's the final result. If I naught is equal to one, we find that I s is equal to five ampere. But is I S really 5 ampere? No, it's 15. It's 3 times. So that's why we multiply the assumed value of I naught with 3, and that is our real value of I naught. So in this circuit, I naught is actually 3 ampere. So that is the key idea that we tie the unknown quantity with the known quantity, we assume a value of the unknown quantity and try to determine the value of the known quantity. And then we just apply the homogeneity property. We multiply the 
uh, current or voltage with K to obtain its actual value. Okay, here what the now let us talk about the details of how to solve this circuit here. Again, you can do it with nodal analysis, mesh analysis, whatever you want, but I just I'm just showing this problem to illustrate how linearity can be applied in circuit analysis and what happens if the value of this current source changes. If the value of current source becomes 150 ampere, you don't have to solve the entire circuit with nodal or mesh again. Then I not will be 30 ampere. How do how do I know that? By applying homogeneity property, a linearity property. Okay. So let's talk about the details of how we solve the pro circuit here. So I just applied KCL at node 1 and then applied KCL at node 2. So the current in this branch is 1. So the voltage here, V1, is 8 volt. And, and once we know the node voltage V1 is equal to 8 volt, we can just apply KCL here to determine the current in this branch and then we again apply KCL at this node, node of 2 to obtain the I4 I4 is equal to IS is which is equal to 5 ampere so that's the key idea of linearity we at first assume a value for the unknown quantity and then we tie the value of the unknown quantity with the known quantity And then we use appropriate multiplication factors to determine the actual value of the unknown quantity. So that's the essence of linearity property for circuit analysis. So hopefully you've got an idea how to apply linearity property for circuit analysis. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for your time.